anime live action adaptation for Yu Yu Hakusho is out on Netflix. And I watched the first episode today. So quick history behind this. Uh, I didn't know anything about Yu Yu Hakusho until like this year, really early in the year. I made a comment that I'd never seen it. People freaked out and I watched the heck out of it and like documented all of it. I actually have like some huge videos that haven't really got done yet that I worked on for that. And um, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I actually I found it to be incredible. Watching it in 2023 was absolutely excellent. Despite its age, it aged like fine, fine wine. Uh, the characters are absolutely incredible. And uh, obviously I was scared shitless that we were going to get uh, Netflix live action. Now, as you know, notoriously, Netflix is the garbage dumpster fire of anime live actions. Pretty much everything they put out has been terrible, 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 terrible. It's what I go to when I want to laugh at something. The only one that I can think of recently that I thought was anything more than just complete trash was Zom 100. Uh, it was a weird adaptation, but, you know, it made sense for what it was. It was just a movie. And uh, I thought it was kind of cool, especially as someone who's kind of checked out some of the manga and had watched the show at that point when it was, you know, not on hiatus forever. But everything else they've done has just been absolute dumpster fires. I could name them like forever, but recently I tried to watch uh, the Death Note one again, and it, it's just like you just are laughing from the beginning. And I also watched the Full Metal Alchemist one that they had, and <laughs> that was a whole other thing too. Absolutely ridiculous. But to lighten the load, the most recent, recent one they've done before Yu Yu was One Piece. And I don't like One Piece. I don't follow One Piece, but there's a lot of people that I know that love One Piece and were very excited for the live action and found a lot of enjoyment of it. In fact, some real big names like, uh, you know, Joey the Anime Man, he thought it was great too. I'm not going to get into the series and I won't watch the Netflix, but I think it's really cool. And it did give me a little bit of hope that maybe, maybe you, you would be done justice, right? And before we started watching this episode, I told Bree, I said, you know, I really need to temper my expectations down. Uh, I really had a lot of problems with the Cowboy Bebop live action, and I'm not even that big of a B-Boy Bop, B-Boy Bop, B-Bop, beep beep, uh, Cowboy Bebop fan. And I still really, it left a nasty taste in my mouth. But the reason why it did, and I, I told Bree this, I said, what my biggest problem with live actions are is that they don't encapsulate the spirit of the show. And for me, Cowboy Bebop is jazz. It's jazz music in anime form. It's like smooth and it's slick and it's stylish and there's just kind of a rhythm to it. And the live action missed the mark completely. I said, I don't care if they one to one did. I don't care if they did their own thing. They just needed to get the vibe of it. And it would have been more successful than it was, in my opinion. I mean, there's a lot of flaws we could pick out all day, but we're not going to go there. So with Yu Yu, I was thinking, you know, what what would make Yu 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 Yu? Like if you if you took everything out of Yu Yu, and you you know needed to get the spirit of it, what would it be? And I told Bree, I said, I think there's two things that need to take place in the show. One, we gotta have Yurameshi be good. He, he's gotta have a good actor. He's gotta have someone that can play to what he is and what his growth is because. It's so paramount to everything. I mean, obviously, it's the name of the damn show. You got to have someone who can kind of come off at the front and be rough and, uh, you know, kind of have a rough exterior, hard exterior, a fighter, a scrapper, maybe someone who doesn't care, who's just mean and angry, but they have to be able to show themselves otherwise to just a couple people. And that's that's really what is intrinsic about the beginning of the show, in my opinion, is that we got Yurameshi and he is like really mean and a scrapper and he just seems like he's this guy, but a couple people see him as that guy. A little kind, a little sweet, a little caring, more than what people would expect. Subverting expectations, right? That's a, this whole thing of his character. The other thing that you have to have, and this might sound ridiculous to people, but the other thing that I said you have to, have to, have to have is you have to have someone who does Kuwabara exceptionally we, you gotta have the kuwabara to the urameshi like they are the pea and the pod the yin and the yang and they have to jive like none other and kuwabara has to be 
wild. He's got to be a character, a memorable person. And there's a huge reason why, and that's because he probably has one of the best character development arcs I've ever seen in so long. And I, I like all this, you know, artsy, fartsy, hoo-ha crap. And uh, I'm not really big into a ton of like kind of the layman's animes and stuff like that, which I, I've been dabbling lately. But <laughs> this one slaughtered it, man. Kuwabara was incredible. When he makes his changes and he gets to where he needs to be, he is just fantastic. But he's crazy and he's silly and he's weird. And I told Bray, I said, we gotta, they gotta have that. They gotta have that in the show. Because if they don't do it, it's not going to work. And if they can do both of those things, it doesn't really matter what else they do, the show could work. The show could reasonably work, in my opinion. Everyone's got their own little thing. Some people like one-to-ones. Some people like to branch off and do something totally new and original. People are all over the place. But in my opinion, if you can get the heart, the soul, the vibe of the freaking anime into the live action, you'll be successful. You know, a ton of animes have a bunch of different issues with doing this. And most commonly, it's like this weird thing where sometimes they try to stick exactly to the script of the original anime and they try to make an anime be live action. And there's a huge amount of people, myself included for the most part, that doesn't really think that a pure and true one-to-one -one works. Because when you have humans being like anime characters, it just doesn't, it, it comes off strange, usually. We'll get to that later. But, uh, you know, Ed, Ed from Cowboy Bebop saw that, like, no. I, in fact, I, I have a lot that I could say on that, but I'm not going to, but that's a general example. So you have Ed, and you try to take Ed from Cowboy Bebop, and you try to put Ed into the live action, being the exact same thing, and it just, it comes off as cringe. It comes off as really bad cringe. I hate to be that guy, but that's, it's so true. And it did. It came off as cringe. So that was where I was at when I started this episode. And uh, I wanted to have an open mind. I wanted to feel like I was going to give this a chance. I didn't want to go into this show being like, oh, Netflix is ruining it. They've destroyed it all, which is granted what I said a lot when they made the announcement, but they did good with One Piece. So off we went and I turned the episode on and I actually what I did was I recorded myself watching the episode. I'm not going to show any clips of it, but I wanted to see like kind of how I flowed through it and uh, how it started off was I at the beginning of the episode, I loved it. I, I really liked how they opened the episode up. I felt like they encapsulated the initial idea of uh, Yurameshi dying and uh, getting hit by a car and just kind of the craziness of that whole event and him seeing himself dead on the ground, not really knowing what was going on and how, um, you know, people reacted to that. Uh, Keiko just crying and, and stuff like that. And, and they did that really well. They had a lot of great camera work. Uh, initially, it was like my favorite. I loved how they kind of sweeped and moved stuff around everywhere. It was very kind of fluid and motiony, which felt kind of intrinsic to Yu Yu. It felt very Yu Yu E how they showed everything off, despite things being different in live action. And uh, yeah, that was great. Uh, they kind of used it over. They, they overused it after a bit, which you know is what it is. They they, they tried. Uh, not everything's perfect in life. Uh, yeah, the story kind of it flowed, and it seemed like it was a one to one at first, and then. And then it didn't. After the first intro, they, they started throwing some stuff in there. And I don't know how far I want to get into this, but we basically get the Makai, uh, the bugs, you know, the little bug things. They're like huge right off the beginning. And they get wrapped right into the central point of stuff that's happening. And you can really tell that the pacing of this show is going to be bonkers. So every episode's like an hour long, or at least the first episode was an hour long. It, it moved at a breakneck pace. In fact, the, the first episode, when I looked over everything, it covers the first five and a half uh, episodes of the anime and it, it leaves out a lot it they cut a lot of stuff out to try to streamline stuff and then they brought the makai in really strong that was kind of when i started to get really confused at how i felt about this because i i thought they did stuff right i thought you know the acting seemed decent enough keiko kind of sucks the mom kind of sucks at acting i'm sorry actors but it was bad and stiff but you know your meshi had had the idea behind him. I don't know that he was written, you know, the script was written well enough for him to carry exactly. But I think if they had nuanced things a little bit more, they really could have got Yurameshi down really well with that actor that they chose. And uh, I wasn't I wasn't rejecting it like I was really worried I would. Kuwabara, you know, they show him and he is, he's different, but 
they did this interesting idea where they took, you know, what I said before, don't ever take an anime character and put them directly into live action, but they did. And, and I'm going to say here right now, I think if there is a time to do that, it's Kuwabara. He's crazy. You got to have him be kind of wild and over the top because that's what makes him him. And even in the cartoon, it's like he's almost in the anime. It's almost like he's too much for an anime even. I mean, he's really raucous. And if you watch the dub, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, you got to do this, guys. And he's got this crazy voice and it's it's uh, he's wild and he's crazy. And they they did that. It, it seemed like they really did that. They made him comical and they made him silly. But in Yu Yu, it worked with having him directly like that. The other thing that they kind of brought in from like the anime style, cartoon style, whatever you want to call it, animated style is the fighting. And they did the fighting really weirdly over the top as well. Uh, they kind of like accentuate like these wild punches and you can tell half the time they're on wires for everything. I, there was a charm to it that worked for it. It was it was very cool. It was very, very cool that they did that. And maybe not everyone will agree with me, but as someone who recently watched like all of you, you in just a huge binge setting, my memory of it feels like what they did was bring the feeling to the live action and that's awesome that was really 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 awesome i give them big 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 kudos for that but uh, going back on a downside though oh my god we gotta talk about koenma okay i don't know i don't know if they did reveals for this because i kind of tried to stay away from the spoilers so i can go into stuff fresh but uh they introduced koenma you know and i was like Oh, okay, all right, here we go. This is like a big moment, right? And in my opinion, it's it's kind of a big deal because it's it's the first time he's being like properly introduced to the spirit world. He's got Botan, and Botan's kind of silly, but she does kind of seem like a girl. And so meeting Quenma is is a big, big deal where he's seeing something crazy, which is a kid, right? Like ruling this huge stuff and, and being big. I wasn't like expecting like a baby, because you know, obviously that's not something that you could feasibly do in a live action is is having a baby uh, voice act or even just like a toddler voice act. But I was kind of thinking like, you know, small statured, like 12, 13 year old boy, someone tiny, right? Much younger than Urameshi. And then they revealed him and he was he was like the grown up version of himself like i don't get me wrong i think that the grown-up version of himself is fun in the anime and works well when they use him how they use him uh mostly through like you know the tournament stuff but uh as an introductory thing i felt like there was just so much lost by having him be an adult instead and and the whole situation you know played out kind of pretty similar to the anime where he meets them and i need you to do this go do this you're going to be a spirit detective blah 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 i mean they do the spirit detective thing later but it's it's fast forwarded for the live action and they go and they they meet with him and he he tells them no and it just feels different cuz I, I feel like so much of it like you know where you use like oh, i don't listen to anyone but i mean it's like especially he's not going to listen to a little tiny little boy right i mean it's, it's the ridiculousness of it and it it brings it kind of more cosmically strange i guess that that was my old thing and maybe i'm nitpicking a little bit with that one but i just don't i don't think he works being older and i don't know maybe it changes as the episodes go by like i said i've only seen episode one but yeah that was uh that was it and so we covered through the first five and a half episodes like i said with this thing it blazes really fast they they tweak a lot of events and the other thing that really kind of screwed me up is we were watching it and i kept thinking no that doesn't that's not how this played out. Like, I don't think that's until later. I don't think that scene is until later. And that's not until later. Like, what's... Like, I was really confused as someone who had, like, memories of the show, seeing kind of how they were putting these scenes together and talking about different subjects and stuff here and there. And it just... It felt really, like, sloppy to me. But this is coming from someone who's, like, recently seen the show. And it, then I was really wondering, how would this look to someone who's never seen you you i mean some of this stuff is really really strange how they drop the order of things and how they how they shift around through different things or sometimes they just cut like through things too as well like um a good example of that is is the whole thing with you use body uh if you've seen the beginning of the anime you know it, it's kind of this the thing where he's got to get back into his body and there's different things that they have to do. And I'm not going to really get into the details of it, but it's, it's like an ordeal. It takes up like an episode and a half or something. I think it's, it's, it's a big thing. 
And uh, and then he's got to have his body be kissed and all this stuff. And they cut that all out. They cut all of that out. And they kind of just fast forward into the house burning and him needing to get the body. And then it gets weird from there because everything just happens at a breakneck speed. And Quenma just kind of snaps his fingers and things just happen. And we're just supposed to accept it. And that I thought was really weakly done. It was not... It wasn't as nuanced. Uh, Yu Yu definitely has like this magic of nuance that it did, despite being so old. Uh, you wouldn't think you'd get that from a, a anime like that, and that's what surprised me and made me love it so much when I watched it. Yeah, There's just a lot of weird pacing and strange things that go on in this show, and it just by the time I was over with it, I like I started off loving it, and then I felt away, and then I loved it again, and there was things I loved, there was things I liked, you know, things done so well, things done so wrong. Maybe that's just what's to be expected of live action. Uh, I don't want to keep you and listening to me ramble on for like an hour and a half. So I'm going to cut it off here, but I'd love to know what everybody thinks in the comments below. And if you've seen more episodes, try not to spoil them for people down below. Uh, I'll be doing another video about this probably when I've watched the whole thing. But yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on the show and if you're even going to watch it. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. If you like this content, hit the thumbs up. If you don't, hit the thumbs down. Subscribe to Yokoso Otaku for more anime news, reviews, and gaming.